Hi there, uh, I'm Struppi and I would like to share something with you um, concerning the so-called platonic solids. So just, you know, just to recap, um, the platonic solids are a group of five shapes that people have been putting into one family for the last, I don't know, 2000 years or so, like since the, the Greek antique and possibly before that. Uh, the name goes back to Plato who described them and they play a very important role in the classic mathematics and geometry because they uh, they give us a, a group of shapes that are based on polygons and have different properties and they are also one of the most important categories of the so-called um, sacred geometry. Now what I would like to share with you is a little bit of a a look into the nature of these shapes because they are not, as I understand them, the same. They are not even a valid category because the way we categorize them, looking at them by going from polygons and thinking of them as being something solid, has a lot of troubles and these go back to the misconception of solidity is in, in, in general because back in the ancient Greece uh, people understood something as being solid when it was made from I don't know granite stone wood clay something like that and what they didn't know was what we now know that the, the reality of the universe we're living in is there is nothing solid, period. It's all waves, it's wave patterns that inter, interact and intertwine and interweave to form particles and structures. And I learned what I'm going to share with you now from Richard Buckminster Fuller who uh, took most of his life to discover and develop a science called synergetics which is based on the study of synergy which is the, the properties of whole systems, whole entities that you cannot discern by looking at the parts of the system taken individually because it is precisely the connection between the parts that creates synergy. Now what I want to show you is the so-called family of platonic solids and what their, what their true nature is. So the platonic solids as they have been brought down through history in abstract terms in a science that is based on scripture, on paper, on pictures and all these things. It's a, it's a science that lacks the, the, the sense, sensuality, the sensuous, the the real reality of our existence, the embodied existence. And looking at that, we, we will look at these now. What I have here is just really the most simple thing to make. Um, it's just paper straws and a string. It's one string going through the whole thing and you can see if I go around here, I put three straws on a string and I go through the first one with the straws so that it comes out on two sides 
I can pull on it and it tightens into a triangle. Now these so-called solids are always th thrown together with um, structures and we use the word structure very randomly in our society and our world because we do not really have a sense of what makes structure and that's one of the things that Buckminster Fuller studied and he discovered or he says he describes that only the triangle is a structure it is the only self-sustaining pattern in, in the universe where you have a you know these connections here they are flexible um, it's really just a string going through so until I close the loop to make a triangle the whole thing is shaky now only by closing the loop closing the circle this becomes strong and, and stable because this part here is like a like a, a lever you know like on a on a scissor or something like that it can move and on the on the parts opposite from this part here and here this is the lever arms and where I have the most control over this joint I put in another strut which fixes this part just as this fixes this and this fixes that that's why triangles are so strong um, I could also go into where these what these geometries really um, imply or where they come from because they are not this is a geometry that doesn't come f from straws it's one that comes from from spheres take pebbles or nuts or potatoes or whatever sphere you find and put three of them in a triangle and the fourth one on the top and you get this and this is the first of the so-called platonic solids uh, it's the the Greek called this a tetrahedron which means four sides hedron meaning a side uh, or a surface actually so they thought of these solids in terms of uh, surfaces so they would make them from wood or from stone or something and here would be a surface but there is not really this is uh, this is more like an eye like a window where I can look through hence I like to call this a tetrops or four eyes ops being the old word for eyes so this is where it all begins this is the first the primary structure and s system of universe that has inside and outside and actually it's the strongest of all the shapes and it's got six parts the same number as if I would make two separate triangles I can put them together like this and get four triangles out of them so there is some synergy so next up the next solid or shape is this one which is the octahedron as the Greek called it I call it octops or maybe eight eyes acht auge depending on your language again there is no surface there is just eyes and these two are absolutely uh, this, they are so close to one another uh, I could go on into explaining how they come about because one is giving birth to the other you can see here this is the same shape as this but instead of just one two three four spheres one two three four on this one we actually have another six spheres so this is a second frequency frequency means the number of intervals between spheres so on every edge no every corner of this is a sphere and 
these struts are really the connection between the centers of two spheres. And if you have two spheres, you have a valley between them, an interval, intervalley. So this is second frequency of this, and you, you see it's it comes from one, two, three, four of these ones stacked together like the four spheres that would make this, and in the, in the center of them is a is an empty space like a, the the, the com, um, complementary space, and that is this one. So these two come out of one another and both together are able to fill space. Now after these two the third uh, platonic solid that everyone knows and this is really the one that everyone knows because this is the, the fundament the, the base basic shape of human nature the basic idea behind everything we, we think and create is the hexahedron or cube and now we run into a problem because this is made exactly the same way as the other two just with this uh, straw and the string but on this one there is no triangles well there are some in the corners here made of the string but uh, yeah, what is going on? So sometimes you see people making these structures or these shapes and they say uh, Yeah, this is not a very good example of a cube because it's not holding But really this is the true nature of the cube the non-triangulated cube It's something I would rather Instead of calling it a form which is some substantial this is more of a transform or a dance form because it it moves which is cool because you can you can give it you can put it into different um, arrangements which suddenly again like this this is again kind of a the inside of a four eyes one two three four corners here we could also do it like that which is a hint at the vector equilibrium which I could should make a video about as well we can also kind of fold it possibly like what was it mm, I forgot there's a way to get this stable more or less by folding it ah this one yes okay so this is um another way now we got two of these one two and this is more stable but as it is here the only way to make this stable would be to put six more struts or sticks in between these corners and make the face diagonals and if you do that what you end up with is you create a tetra inside of the cube this one is a little small but you can maybe see where this is going if if this was the, the, the exact size the same length as this uh, we would be able to stabilize the cube but only by putting in more parts um, without that there is no cube and even if you see a very strong seemingly strong cube made of metal or something you can be sure that they put a lot of effort into the corners uh, to make them stiff to add glue or uh, some soldering or something so what they essentially do is they create a a lot of small triangles microscopic triangles in the corners that have to hold the whole thing but they are really in the in the weakest position to do that okay so this is the non cube and then we have another solid made of triangles which is this one the so called icosahedron or 
I would rather call it 20 eyes or icosops because again there is no surface here and again because this is completely triangulated it's a stable structure it's actually just as stable as these others um, if I opened up one of these connections the whole thing could be could move again and, and that's something I play with a lot but um, like this uh, these three they are intimately connected because they are parts of a phase transition of another shape that I do not have here at the moment should have gotten it but yeah maybe I'll do a, a follow-up on this video where I show you the the vector equilibrium and the, the so-called jitterbug transformation which I would rather call the dance of the Tao but this leaves us with exactly one more um, of these so-called platonic solids and that one is again a transform this is the dodecahedron pentagonal dodecahedron and just like the cube before it this lacks any structure any stability anything at all this is really again a transform it cannot hold its shape and it's absolutely ridiculous to make up a or let's it's not ridiculous it is possible to to claim these five shapes belonging to in the same category but it is a, it is a result of a of passing on knowledge only in an abstract sense where you have to imagine all these things because then you can imagine them being similar whereas in reality they are not and the question remains what really is the connection between these things and it's not so complicated because we know of duals so the, the a dual is what you get when you change the configuration of a shape you transform it so that the corner becomes the face or eye and the eyes become the corners so for the tetra the tetraps is its own dual if I was to transform it I would get the same shape just in just you see that the, the corners are triangles and this is triangles so just another reason why the tetra is special there's a lot of special things about it which have nothing at all to do with some kind of esoteric uh, I don't know imagine this imagine that ideas but really with the true nature of this shape um, so tetra it's, is its own dual with the octa the octops if you look closely at these corners I don't know if you can see them but in these corners you see little squares just as well as if you look at this shape it's made up of three squares intertwined um, now these squares always result from the triangles which is absolutely crucial to understand they do not come from their um, on their own if I was to make a, a square from straws it can't hold so this can only hold because it's made up of triangles and the squares are kind of more of an illusion than a, a real fact of the thing and the dual of this is the is this one so if you look into the corners of the cube you see there's little triangles in the corners of the octa there's little squares uh, so essentially what I've done with these two is on this one it's like like um, tides you know you have a flood and you have a um, ebb 
the tide rises, the tide falls. Now on one end of the tide we have the this structure where the the faces are faces and the corners are corners and on the other side we transform it into the opposite configuration where suddenly our corners become the faces and vice versa and this again is able to move and not stable anymore the same is true if I were to cut the octa in half which I can show you here with this um, this is a hexagon uh, which really is the nature of the circle and the it's made up of six triangles by the way all these triangles have 60 degrees right 60 60 60 and our convention is to call the 90 degree of the square a right angle so I would I do suggest that we call this 60 degrees a left angle because that's still open and the left angle makes it a little easier to speak about this so if I have this I rip it open like a spark of life I fold it up I get a seat which contains all the information of the whole thing this way looking at it it looks a little like a, a vulva like the gateway of life and now we can open this up and the first stop is this we've seen that before so this is a tetrops also by the way look at my profile for a tetra fire to see how this can change the way we make our fires because right now we're burning up the world for them and we could be using our fires to get carbon back into the ground into the soil where it is desperately needed um, so open it this another part and you get this which is f very famous for being a square based pyramid which is really half of the octa but what you see here is this is a, a way to cut it in half that disintegrates the whole thing because now it's not stable anymore there's no triangulation on the square side and it can move which is good we have four arms or legs and we can move because the triangles are not closed and we can close them in relation to the world we move in if you open it up one more part you get a corner of the icosa or even the ten eyes and after that comes again this which is a slice through the vector equilibrium which we will cover later now that was just to go to show that the octave loses its integrity if you cut it in into a, a pyramid if you had a higher frequency of it as i have in my room you could cut it in half this way and con keep the the integrity of it keep it stable and now after looking at the duality of octa and cube we can also look at this um, this is made of 30 straws and one string even though the string has changed in between I, I, I ran out of the one string so I put on another one but it's essentially one loop of string uh, 30 struts 12 a dozen corners and 20 eyes now the dual of this again would make the triangles very small in the corners and the pentagons that are in the corners of this would become the the eyes and that is exactly what we have in the, in this dodecahedron 
so this is the dual state of the icosa but it's really not a not a state in itself it's not even a form and you can see the little triangles in the corners here but they are not strong enough to really hold this so yeah there you go the platonic solids in my eyes in my understanding are completely completely invalid and there's another part to this because um, yeah let me just try to sh to explain this very quick so this these three are part of a transformation which I can show you later uh, from small to medium to big and again it's medium small um, and all three are made of identical parts you can transform them from one to the other and if you look at the world as we are trained to from this perspective um, you know the rustas talk of babylon system i think this is what this is the essence of it babylon system is the the idea that the regular or the 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 unit of measurement, the unit of understanding and analyzing the world is the edge of the cube. That's our convention. So our idea of three-dimensional space based on solely on, on axioms and not on evidence uh, is the idea of this cube holding still because we do not take time into the picture if we did it would just collapse i'm still waiting for the day when the universe holds its breath for a second to have this stand um so the difference is or the the, the essential part that comes out of my problem with these um with the category of these solids is if we use this corner here, this edge of the cube, as our unit reference, then the only thing that makes sense is cubes. And everything else in the universe, all the other shapes, become irrational and complicated. But that is not due to the nature, but only because of the convention we make. Because what really is needed to make this stable is the diagonal, the root of the square. The root is where the square comes from. It, only, it al also goes to show that every square that holds its shape is essentially at least two triangles. Otherwise there is no square. And now if we were to connect this, we have created a tetra inside. You can see that the, the diagonal is of course longer than the edge. So if this is 1, then this is the square root of 2, which is 1.144, 1 something like that. Hey Carl. Um, and <laughs> this is Schrödinger's cat, absolutely alive, because Schrödinger's cat what kind of box is it stuck in? You've got a tick on your chin, my friend. What is the shape of the box of Schrödinger's cat, I wonder? Anyway, that is uh, not the topic of this video. Let me just finish this tick. Quick, quick tick. Okay. Um, all right, so yeah, we, we, we were here. Um, the definition of this as unit now if we define this as our measure of our reference then this becomes irrational square root of 2 but the rational part of the cube is really the edge of this inside of it so if this is really 
where space and time begin because it's the first time you have inside and outside you have a volume this is a reference of volume and the only part that we need to know is the length of this if this is one then the volume of this thing is one in this case here we increase the frequency now this one small one would be this unit part and by increasing the frequency we have two by two is one two three four and we know these to the power to the second power we call that square numbers but really it's triangle numbers because it comes from the triangle just as the volume comes from the uh, triangles as well because now if we go 2 by 2 by 2 2 times 2 times 2 we got 8 and it's obvious that 1 2 3 4 of these small ones have a volume of 4 which leaves the comp complementary octa inside with a volume of 4 as well so now we know that this is a volume of 1 and this is a volume of 4 but how many parts do we need for this? This is half a dozen parts, six struts. This is a dozen, 12 struts. Incidentally, it's the same 12 struts that I used for this, which cannot hold its shape. So to make this a reality, we need six more struts, which leaves us with 18 or one and a half dozen. Whereas this is a perfect stable structure with just a dozen parts.